Hi, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, and this afternoon, if you haven't already guessed it, we're going to be looking at smart plugs. Here on the table, we have four smart plugs for the UK market, some from very big names, some from uh, quite smaller names in the smart home market. But anyone who's used any kind of smart home will know that uh, smart plugs really are the, the bread and butter of a smart home. They're extremely useful, they can make dumb objects, well, slightly less dumb, uh, and you can use them from anything from uh, turning the lights off when the children go out and forget to turn the TV off. So they are very useful. Are all smart plugs the same? Well, we're going to try and find that out this afternoon. On the table today, we have the offering from uh, Samsung SmartThings. I think they're now onto the, possibly their third generation of smart plug. We have um, a, a smart plug from Inner, I -N -N R who do a range of uh, Zigbee products. We also have uh, Lidl's or Lidl's offering, which is branded under Silvercrest. So that's their smart home solution. And then we have Ikea's Tradfree on the right-hand side. All of these plugs bring something different to the table. Um, they're all better in slightly different ways. And of course, one of the big variations is in, is in price. If we just talk about that very briefly before we get into the features, we have the cheapest one here. I think we paid eight pounds for the uh, smart plug from Lidl, uh, up through ten pounds from IKEA, and then the uh, inner one. If you buy it in a two pack, they come in at seventeen pounds fifty. So you, you get two for thirty five pounds, and then the RRP of the Samsung one is uh, nearly thirty pounds. But you find that you can get them on Amazon usually for about half of that. I think I only paid about. I think I paid less than £17 for, for the Samsung one. So you can see there's variations in not just in RRP, but also what you can buy them for. So, as I said, each of these has their own features, and one of the most obvious ones, if I just show you as I move them here, is that three of the offerings on the table here have on-off switches basically on the top. So if you do need to turn something on quickly, you don't have to fumble around for your smartphone. Uh, you can basically just press the buttons on the top of here. The odd one out here is the, uh, the offering from uh, IKEA that doesn't really have any kind of on-off other than through the, the smart app. Other features, as you can probably notice as well, is that these are not all the same shape. And, to, and this is important when you want to get multiple devices into sockets so if i just push this all out of the way now the one that wins really here is the ikea one it does have this big bit at the bottom here that hangs down but it does have the advantage of really being not much wider than the kind of plug itself so i can put that in there and if you can see on this this uh, extension it does not I mean, these, I mean these are lines are slightly artificial but you can kind of see it does not encroach beyond the midpoint but as soon as I try and start and put any of these other ones in, you can kind of find that things start getting jammed up pretty quickly. You can kind of see that one won't go in at all, and frankly, with no hope of getting the, the Samsung one in at the end. But if we are looking at if we are looking at widths, really, the IKEA one is definitely the the thinnest. The Tradfree one does have let me just move these across uh, a slight effect where it is narrower um, at the at this part. Than it is at this bit so in some instances you might get away with um, you know if you have this here and an ordinary plug there but you definitely won't get two like you know two tra uh, two Lidl sockets next to each other and you've got the same kind of problem with 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 these ones um, where they're just a bit fatter at the base than they are at the top and you just can't you just simply can't get two of these in side by side now this will be less of an off less of a problem on um, on wall sockets in that they do tend to have a, a slightly bigger separation but it's just something you ought to bear in mind if you're trying to get two of these in to a wall socket just make sure that you've got all the space you need. You perhaps also have noticed looking out at the top is that some of these are fatter than others and there's no doubt that the uh, or deeper than others is that the uh, the silver crest the little one um, definitely is the fattest by a, a considerable considerable margin. You can see that there. Mm. 
Okay, um, what else is there to say? I mean, in terms of electrics, all of them are 13 amp devices. So in theory, you should be able to power any electrical unit which uses up to 13 amps. I'm not sure I'd be particularly confident of all of these devices taking 13 amps all the time. That's just my opinion. I'm not an electrical engineer or qualified to comment on that. Um, but one thing I do notice is that some of the sockets do actually have access to the fuse on the other side. So if there is a problem and you do actually blow a fuse, you can replace the fuse on the Silvercrest, that's Lidl's one, and also on the IKEA one. You might find earlier versions of Samsung's smart socket did also have the fuse in the back here. Uh, it was also a slightly different model as it had its power buttons on the side here as well. But uh, these ones will undoubtedly have uh, internal fuses, but once they blow, I'm afraid that's it. Um, there's no user service or parts in here at all. Now three of these, if you do use these in a system such as, um, so for the sake of it, such as smart things, the, the non-smart things sockets are very much restricted to just turning devices on and off within the, the smart things uh, like framework. And, and that's fine for the vast majority. And what I'll do is I'll just, uh, just very briefly we'll plug in a couple of these just so you can see what, see what happens. So I've managed to plug in three of the of the sockets, we've got the inner one here, IKEA's Tradfree, and we've got the little um, Silvercrest one here. And all of them offer some kind of indication as to whether they're powered on. So you've got the green light here, you've got the white light, white LED in the on-off button on the Silvercrest one. And as you see here, if I just press the button here, it turns them off. Okay, uh, I can't turn the IKEA one off because it doesn't have a button. Um, and just really within, if you're looking within smart things. All you can really got is basically a simple on-off button. So if I just turn that on, oops, there we go, you can kind of see it. Very straightforward. Uh, as I said, you do have all the features that you would have available to you within smart things in terms of turning things on and off when people come in and out of the room, whether the um, whether it's getting dark and those kind of things. Obviously, you need extra equipment you know, in terms of motion sensors to make those things happen, but for these particular three uh, smart plugs, everything is equal from a smart things point of view. Now, if I just unplug them briefly and plug in the uh, the actual smart things smart plug, it behaves very similarly in that you have a little socket on the button on the top, and you can kind of see it's very faint on uh, in the camera light, but there is actually a, can you see the little? It's actually a little green LED. And you can just about see it there. Um, some people prefer the bright light, some people don't. Um, it's entirely up to you. But one of the features that we can kind of see in these sockets is that they have extra features to do with power monitoring, which is only available if you have the official SmartThings plug. And if I just show you very briefly in here, um, have it here. So this is to do with my tall dryer. But you can kind of see that we've got these. Let me just adjust the screen there a bit. You kind of got these options around the power meter and energy consumption. And uh, I can just turn it on. That's it. Come on there. You probably heard the wee click. And then if I can open up some of these things, obviously it's not going to consume any power any power here because um, it's not plugged into anything. But you can kind of see historically where power was used uh, in the in, you know, during the day. And I can look how it's done historically. And that's an instantaneous power. So that's your zero watts as it stands at the moment and then you've got your kilowatt hours uh, historically that you can kind of see as well so if you're interested in, in seeing how much power your various units around the house are using then the smart things plug it really is the is the one to go for particularly you know if you have smart things uh, these features only really work where you're using a device within its own ecosystem so it's really good from that point of view Right, well that pretty much concludes our look into these four smart plugs for the UK market. As I mentioned at the beginning, all of them kind of have their pros and cons, and there are different scenarios where you might choose one over the other. If you're absolutely looking for the cheapest one, uh, it's the, the one from uh, Lidl. It's there from their Silvercrest range. Uh, at £8, it's definitely the cheapest. Um, the only difficulty is actually finding them in stock. 
um, I don't know how little does their stock control, but they tend to seem to get drops. So if you're not there for a drop, you can find that three weeks later there's nothing left, and when you need one, you can't get one. But at eight pounds, you can probably buy an extra one or two uh, for those little emergencies. In terms of smallers, if you're trying to get as many, uh, if you have difficulties with uh, with space, or if you're trying to get as many onto a, an extension lead as you can, then IKEA is definitely the one to go for. It's definitely the narrowest this way, though clearly it is, has this uh, bit that hangs down to the bottom and there is no on-off button. So uh, I've got quite a few of these. I tend to use these in situations where I know that I'm never gonna need to uh, manually turn the device on and off. So um, I typically use it for things like uh, uh, outside Christmas lights, things like that. Um, but I, I think they're grand, good price at £10 as well. At the other end, we do have the um, Samsung Smart Things. This is definitely the one to get if you want full compatibility with Smart Things and you want to do your energy monitoring. Now, at, at £30, the full price, um, I do think that they're slightly uncompetitive, and in which case, you know, I tend to be tending to fall back on the inner devices, as for the vast majority of my sockets, I really don't need. Uh, the energy monitoring and the the inner sockets really work quite well in that they're relatively small uh, and at £17.50 they're not tremendously expensive yes they're more expensive than these ones but they're not £30 like this but as I mentioned earlier the price of these uh, smart plugs um, I say I've bought two of these recently for just under £17 on uh, Amazon so uh, this these ones here are now cheaper than the two pack, you know, I can buy a single one of these cheaper than a double pack version, if you like, of these at £17.50. So I'm afraid the inner socket is the one that kind of uh, kind of loses out in the in the price battle. The one thing I would say it's good for is that if you want a, an easy indicator of, of whether the device is on and off, it has a nice bright uh, LED there, which is, which is easy to see, and you do have access to the button on top. So there you have it four UK smart plugs, four, well, three anyway, uh, different scenarios where we have a different winner. Um, so let's wrap it up. Let's take it home, as they say. So this is, this is Andrew for Geek News Central. Check out the website, and if you like, please subscribe. Thanks very much.